five, four, three, two, one. And liftoff. Liftoff of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, launching Dragon to the International Space Station and returning cargo resupply missions to U.S. soil. Will the successful launch of the SpaceX rocket and cargo ship be the catalyst needed to transform U.S. space travel? We're going to talk about that right now, right here on WSJ Lunch Break. Welcome to the show. I'm Wendy Bounds. We're joined this morning by Andy Pastor. He is in Los Angeles, and he is the space expert for the Wall Street Journal. He has been following this story since its beginning. Uh, good afternoon, Andy. So tell us a little bit about the successful launch. Is this going to be what basically helps the U.S. take back its position from Russia. It's a step forward, but way too early to tell whether it'll completely succeed. It has some uh, really intriguing short-term and long-term implications. For the short term, it's clear that the U.S. looks as though, the U.S. government looks as though it's on the way to getting out of the routine resupply missions to the International Space Station. This is the third time in less than a year that SpaceX has been able to put a capsule into orbit. In May, they linked up with the space station. They're going to try to link up again this time. And so it's a huge step forward in this relatively narrow um, niche market, if you will. Much more significant, it doesn't really answer the long-term questions of whether there will be a viable commercial space industry able to take astronauts to the space station and beyond. There's a lot of money at stake with this, uh, Andy. I mean, uh, you know, SpaceX and its founder, Elon Musk, that company just stands to receive, I think, $1.6 in revenue over the next five years with this project. Talk to us a little bit about the money, how it's flowing, where it's going, and uh, in ter what, what kind of U.S. subsidies could be involved here. Well, of course, when you talk about any kind of space travel, whether it's cargo or manned missions, the, the um, development costs and the operational costs can be huge. Uh, SpaceX is uh, in line to receive about $1.6 billion if it's, a, if it's able to perform uh, about um, a dozen uh, cargo uh, trips to the space station, taking cargo up and returning, um, returning uh, all sorts of things back down to the Earth. Much more uh, significant, I think, for the long term is that the estimates vary on how much it'll take to actually develop two or three commercially built and operated spacecraft able to take astronauts to the space station. It may be three billion, it may be four billion overall, it may be much more. And recently, NASA, in a House uh, Science Committee hearing, acknowledged that, in fact, these, quote, commercial programs uh, will have much less oversight from NASA, but, indeed, there'll be basically 80 to 90 percent federal money to develop these new manned spacecraft. And for Boeing, which, along with SpaceX, uh, is uh, among the companies vying to take astronauts to the space station. Boeing actually looks as though it'll um, it, it'll uh, be contributing even less than perhaps 10 percent of the total cost. So the taxpayers are still going to be paying the vast majority of the development costs. So Andy, since you're talking about spending my money, let me uh, let me ask you this: Remind me why this mission is important. What they're trying to achieve by taking this cargo up there right now? What is the long-term goal? It's, it's, it's pretty simple. The space station has cost about $100 billion, and it's supposed to be a scientific laboratory, all sorts of science uh, for uh, uh, drugs, for uh, manufacturing, for health-related issues. But if you can't take experiments up to the space station reliably and bring back those experiments and other goods reliably so they can be analyzed, it's very hard to do science. So the cargo mission that SpaceX is now conducting is designed to ensure that scientists will be able to get stuff up to the space station and get their results back in a reliable and relatively inexpensive fashion compared to what it would cost if the government had developed and operated this vehicle. The Russians now uh, have been the only way to, to, uh, to get uh, cargo and astronauts to the space station since the space shuttles were retired.